Okay, so picture this. You're scrolling through the internet and you come across the cutest wabi-sabi Japandi inspired dresser. But the only thing that's not cute about it is its price tag. It's almost $3,000 after tax, which is ridiculous. But let me show you how to transform an IKEA Tarva dresser into the wardrobe of your dreams. You can actually follow these steps for any types of furniture, including dressers that look similar to the IKEA Tarva. The first step is to build a wooden frame onto your drawer front, and then pick a material like burlap, cane, or even slat wood to attach to the drawer front. And then lastly, if you choose to do so, you can upgrade the hardware. I went with the brass material. And if you combine all three steps, you'll get a look similar to this. But before we begin, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future DIY or home improvement videos. Okay, let's jump back in. I combined a six and a three drawer dresser to make a nine drawer piece. So this is the current state of my IKEA dresser. As you can see, it's in dire need of a makeover because it looks like it has a really bad farmer's tan. And by the way, all the products used in this project will be listed in the description down below. And don't forget to watch until the end for a breakout of the total cost. So let's get started. To begin, I removed all the handles from the dresser. Then I used some wood putty to fill in all the holes. The next step is to build wooden frames that will go around the drawer fronts. I used a simple rectangular shaped screen molding because I really wanted a minimalistic look, but feel free to choose any shape that matches your interior design. To create the corners of the frame, I used a pair of miter shears. If you're a beginner like me, it's an affordable option and it also saves a lot of space, but I find that you need to use a lot of elbow grease to cut the pieces. This was actually my first time cutting wood and making miter corners, and I'm not gonna lie, I was very intimidated at first, but like all new skills, you start to gain more confidence the more you do it. So I encourage you to try something new as well. You're capable of more than you think. This part is optional, but if your drawers have an uneven tan line like mine, you can paint them a wood tone color for a uniform look. I'm doing this because although we'll be covering the fronts with burlap, the color will still peek through the webbing. I'm using burlap, which gives a similar organic look as cane webbing while also being accessible and affordable. Then you want to cut out the burlap pieces so that it's slightly smaller than the drawer fronts. And this is because you want the wooden frames to conceal the burlap. To make the cutting process faster, I used the previous piece as a stencil to roughly cut out the seam shape. Just make sure that the fabric weave is straight and in the same direction. If your fabric has creases, you can remove them with a steamer. This will ensure that they'll sit flush against the drawer fronts. This next step is optional, but I opted to glue the fabric to the drawers using an adhesive spray. Adhere the fabric to the drawer like a sticker and then trim off any excess that you see. It doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure that the fabric pieces are larger than the wooden frame and that the direction of the weave is aligned with the drawer. Now we're ready to attach the wooden trims and make a frame using 18 gauge brad nails. Align the trim pieces to the perimeter of the drawer. Then firmly press the brad nailer onto the trim to drive the nail through. I'm replacing the original hardware with seven and a half inch brass handles. I got these ones from Amazon and they were super affordable. With the driver, we're ready to create new holes for the new handles. Find the center of the dresser and make sure it's leveled. Then drill two holes on both sides of the center point, making sure that the holes are seven and a half inches apart. Repeat this step for all nine drawers. I also taped a piece of string across the whole dresser to make sure that the handles are aligned at eye level. Now we can use an orbital sander to sand off all the farmer's tan. I used coarse, medium, and fine grit sandpaper. The coarse grit was really effective at removing the stain as I really wanted to preserve the wood grain texture. I then followed up with a medium and fine grit sandpaper to smooth out the finish and use a microfiber cloth to remove the sawdust. When I wiped down the dresser with a wet towel, I realized that the finish would be yellow if I applied a clear coat directly on top. So to fix this issue, I'm going to make a paint wash, which is essentially one part water and one part paint. I used Sherwin-Williams Crescent Cream, but you can use any cream color or white color paint you have. I just eyeballed the ratio, but essentially you want it to look like milk. Apply the mixture in small sections for a couple seconds and then immediately wipe it off. The paint wash will neutralize the yellow color and make it look like white oak. 
I really like how this technique allows the wood texture to show through. However, I realized that the wood color was a little bit too white for my design style. I'll show you what I mean in a bit, but if you like this color, you can stop here. I wanted the wood finish to be darker and warmer, so I adjusted the paint with a little bit of dark brown and raw sienna acrylic paint. I eyeballed the amount, but a little goes a long way. This time, instead of using a paintbrush and wiping it off, I directly dipped a rag towel into the wash and wiped it onto the dresser. It was a lot more efficient. Here's the color comparison between the two paint washes. The left side is only with the cream paint, and the right side is the same wash but adjusted with brown and sienna acrylic. I like this one more. And finally, it's time to seal in all your hard work with a polyurethane clear coat. Okay, it's time for the big reveal. Just as a reminder, this is the before. And here is the after. So how do you think it turned out? And would you try this at home? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and here are two videos that I think you'll enjoy as well. And as promised, here's the total cost breakout for the whole project. If you made it this far into the video, you're the real MVP. Thank you so, so much for your support. And as a token of my appreciation, here's a little bit of a blooper because this is my first YouTube video and I was having a legit mental breakdown filming my intro. So enjoy. Hi everyone. Ugh. IKEA hack T tutorial is a tutorial. Hi everybody. <laughs> oh God, it's so bad. I beg of you, please subscribe.